Welcome to our Bible class. This is David Kings, the presiding bishop of Charisma Church. It is a great pleasure for me to be a blessing to you. Today I will be speaking on this subject, seven principles for church leadership. Seven principles for church leadership. In a layman's language, a leader is a guide. A leader is one that shows the way and as well goes the way. A leader is a man with vision that attracts people to follow. A leader is a person of influence. A leader is one that inspires and motivates people to follow in the path of success. Church leadership, which I can simply call sacred leadership, the principles may almost align with that of secular leadership. However, sacred leadership requires more technical sense of accountability because you have a responsibility to be both accountable to man and as well to God. So there are some principles that will help you if you are a church leader, you are a pastor or the superintendent of a local church or ministry these principles will be of great blessing to you. Number one, never give positions to people just to have them stay. So often some leaders make this mistake that by giving somebody a position that just newly came, you'll be able to have them stay in a particular place or in the church. On several occasions, this idea has failed. Loyalty doesn't answer to positions. Loyalty doesn't answer to principles, I mean to privileges. Loyalty as well does not answer to popularity. Loyalty truly doesn't answer to praise. Neither does loyalty answer to power. Loyalty as well is something that you need to check. You need to check people's service and you need to check the reason why and behind their availability. That's why in Acts chapter 6 verse 4 Peter said, let's look for men that have high reputation for us to give them the assignment to take care over the welfare of the people. So if you are going to be a successful church leader, never give positions to people just because you want to have want them stay. Number two, your lifestyle gives more lessons than your words. Marcos, that's true. Your lifestyle gives more lessons than your words. What you do is far greater than what you say. Because it is what you do that culminates in what you say. That's why in biblical teaching, we define doctrine as scriptural standards and way of life. And every doctrine affects three areas of your life. Doctrine affects your character, Character is who you are. Doctrine affects your behavior. Your behavior is what you do. Doctrine also affects your destiny. Your destiny is where you go. So never you as a leader mistake that what you say will be of great, greater power than what you do. People tend to see what you do and believe you more than what you say. Number three principle, watch anyone that is too eager 
to be close to you as a leader. It's not bad for people to be close to you. But when you find somebody being overly eager to be close, such person may turn to be dangerous sometimes. Don't be in haste to embrace the services of newcomers. Their services may be good, but accept them with observation. Be a bit careful because so many leaders have fallen down because of this. Not knowing people that there are some that come into leadership with an, an evil intention and as a result, because the leaders did not know, they fall a prey. Number four, always keep your word as a leader. Be a man of your word. The Bible says, Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. Don't say one thing and do another thing. People are expecting to see that what you say is exactly what you are doing. So your word is your bond. Speak the truth always. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Number five. Watch the person who has an issue with your progress. In leadership, if you are going to be successful, you will find a lot of people that will come around you. Then watch those who have issues and challenges with your progress. I often tell people, if you are going to reach the heights, Marcos, listen to this. It will help you. Don't look back. Anytime you look back, Marcus, what you see is your past mess. If at any time you are looking backward, it will only be to see the lessons of the past. Don't look around you. At any time you look around you, you will find a lot of distractions. So in the journey of life, when you are driving the the, the vehicle of destiny, stop looking around you. Anyone that is engaged in a race that keeps turning around to see who are coming, he will miss his steps and people will pass him. Stop looking down at any time in life that you keep looking downward, you go down in life. Because when you look down, you go down. I know so many motivational speakers across the globe. They used to tell us that look forward. But from scriptural perspective, let me say this to you clearly. Stop just looking forward. When you look forward, you see uncertainties because you can't know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. And then I say this, stop looking inward. Anytime a man keeps looking inward, he sees his inadequacies, your inabilities. That's why when the angel came to Gideon, he said, oh, you man of valor, and Gideon said, oh, no, 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 no. It's like you don't understand me. I'm a man from bad family background. He said, don't look at your background. Jesus did not consider his background. Your background is not the reason why you are on the ground. It's just a result of your mentality. There is only one place for you to look. Look up. The psalmist says something. I will look up to the hills from whence my help cometh. For my help cometh from the Lord God of hosts. When you look up, you go up. When you look up, your face brightens. When you look up, you see the glory of the firmament. Because therein, a man's strength lies from above. So always and do your best as a person to watch the person who has an issue with your progress. Don't forget this in life. In every journey of your life, make sure you make progress in four areas. Luke chapter 2 verse 52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus increased in four areas. Jesus grew in four areas. 
Jesus prospered in four areas. And Jesus increased in wisdom. It was mental increase, mental prosperity, mental growth. And he increased in stature. It is physical growth. Jesus was never sick in his lifetime. He understands the principles of eating, what to eat and what not to eat, what to drink and what not to drink. And Jesus increased in favor with God, spiritual growth, spiritual prosperity. And he increased in favor with man, social prosperity. So watch those who have problem with your progress. Number six, never trust a person that does not tithe. Believer or unbeliever. Never tr trust a person that does not tithe. Listen to this. Tithing was operational before the law, during the law, and after the law. Whoever comes around and teaches you is just a mere doctrine of some pastors that are selfish. It's wrong. It is not true. Tithing is an eternal law that brings about a blessing. Anyone that rejects tithing is dangerous. Such a person operates under a curse. And number seven, principle that is so important if you're a leader, particularly a church leader, never hang around visionless people, visionless leaders. Don't keep company with small-minded people because the moment you continue to do that, you get down. Iron, sharpened iron. Go for those that have higher vision so that your life can be strengthened. You can be great as a Christian leader. You can succeed in your life and as well in your ministry. I encourage you one more time, get this book, Overcoming Destiny Limitations. I've been privileged by God to write so many dozens of books and that has been a blessing across the globe. Get a copy of this book, Overcoming Destiny Limitations. What I just taught you, you will get a piece of them in this booklet. And God bless you. I see you succeeding. I see you increasing. And the Lord Almighty will cause your star to shine brighter. I bless you with the blessings of God. And may the Lord give you a deeper understanding for you to excel in your ministry. See you again next time and God bless. Amen.